Are you ready to have your mind blown? Today, we're diving into a story so shocking, so unbelievable that you'll be glued to your screen until the very last second. The youngest convicted murderers, dark childhoods and crimes that defy belief. What drives a child to commit the unthinkable? How can someone so young turn into a cold-blooded killer? From tales that grabbed international headlines to chilling confessions and twists you won't see coming, we're uncovering the most jaw-dropping stories of the world's most infamous young criminals. Stay with us as we unravel these mysteries and explore the dark corners of the human psyche. You won't believe what we've uncovered. This is not just another true crime story. This is a journey into the depths of the extraordinary. Keep watching to discover the unbelievable truths that lie behind these harrowing tales. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single moment of this. Let's get started. Did you know one of the youngest murderers was just 10 years old? In today's episode, we delve into dark childhoods and terrible deeds. Not every kid worries about homework. From cold-blooded murders to manipulative tactics, we're examining the most evil kid in the world. Without further ado, let's dive in. Ashley Martinson wondered how lives turn unimaginable. A year marked Ashley Ann as infamous. What did she do? After her 17th birthday, Ashley Ann Rose Martinson committed a crime that defies belief. She ended her mother and stepfather's lives. A chilling revelation, the world watched her case grab international headlines. She admitted guilt to two counts of second-degree homicide. The result? A daunting 23-year prison sentence. Rewind a bit and you'll find a seemingly ordinary life. Martinson lived with her mother, stepfather, two stepsisters, and a half-sister. Before that dark day, her younger siblings alleged verbal abuse by stepfather Thomas Tony SS. SS had a history of abuse towards his wife and daughters. Shockingly, Martinson also claimed physical abuse and rape by a former boyfriend. Experts believed she had PTSD and depression. It's crucial to note Martinson's stepfather's criminal history. He had convictions for kidnapping, sexual assault, and domestic abuse, among other offenses. Despite being barred from firearms, he had loaded guns. It all started when Ashley Ann's mother and stepfather discovered her secret relationship with 22-year-old Ryan Sisko. Words were exchanged and the situation escalated. Her parents threatened legal action against Sisko. The tension was palpable that night. She wrote a disturbing message on Facebook, expressing her desire to kill her stepfather. He's going to kill her if she doesn't leave soon. I want to kill him so bad, she wrote. The following day, Martinson witnessed her stepfather beating her mother. In a fit of rage, she shot and killed him with a shotgun. When her mother investigated, Martinson killed her with a knife. After the killings, Martinson locked her younger siblings in a closet with food. One sibling saw Thomas's body and didn't believe her denial. Martinson's tale took a turn when her sibling's police statement clashed with hers. She later said the gun was for suicide, but Thomas interrupted her. The capture of Martinson and Sisko in Indiana followed. Her eldest stepsister alerted the police. In court, Martinson faced first-degree homicide and false imprisonment charges. She settled for second-degree murder in a 2016 plea deal. She got 23 years in prison and 17 more under supervision. The prosecution wanted 40 years. Her defense argued for eight, citing family abuse. Judge Michael Bloom felt her past wasn't enough to justify her acts. Now she's in TAA Correctional Wisconsin, claiming to be happy and safe. She even earned her high school diploma in 2017. She tried for a lighter sentence, but was denied in 2019. Her new trial appeal also failed. Anna Wire and Morgan Geyser, oh man, the slender man stabbing. That's one freaky tale that's hard to forget. It was in Wera, Wisconsin in 2014. Two 12-year-old girls, Anna Wire and Morgan Geyser, hatched this horrifying plan to win over a fictional character named Slender Man. Yep, you heard me right. A fictional dude who's like your worst nightmare on stilts. He's got a featureless white face and is as skinny as a twig. The Slenderman character started as a creepy photo on the Something Awful forums. He got his own life, fan fiction, artwork, the whole shebang. People took this thing and ran with it, creating creepy stories. So back to the girls. They tricked their buddy Peyton Luna into a game of hide and seek. But this is no child's play. They take her deep into David's Park, a forest near Weera, 
and stab her 19 times. Can you believe it? 19 times, all to please this made-up monster who supposedly hangs out in wooded areas. It's like a horror story that got way too real. The attackers held down Tonlina and viciously stabbed her a staggering 19 times across her body using a blade that measured 5 inches. Miraculously, she survived despite two of those stabs hitting vital organs. So get this. Ton Luna managed to pull herself to a nearby road after enduring that horrifying ordeal. There, a cyclist spotted her and made that life-saving 911 call. Now flip the script to Anna Wire and Morgan Geyser. About five hours later, they're found hanging out near a furniture store off Interstate 94, almost five miles away. And guess what was with them? The very knife they'd used. They were on a mission, you see. They believed they would meet the mythical Slender Man at his so-called Slender Mansion a whopping 200 miles away in Nicolette National Forest. During interrogations, Morgan showed zero remorse, while Anna seemed somewhat guilty. But both believed their ghastly deed was a sort of tribute to Slender Man. And Paton? She left the hospital just a week after surviving this unthinkable act. Now let's get into the legal roller coaster on which Anna Wire and Morgan Geyser found themselves. These girls got slapped with some serious charges. I'm talking about attempted first-degree homicide level serious. In 2015, the judge chucked their kill-or-be-killed defense right out of the courtroom. In May 2023, Geyser tried for a conditional release, but thought better of it and pulled the plug. In August, switching gears to wire, she initially pleaded not guilty because of a mental defect in 2016. But then, bam, she flips the script a year later pleading guilty to a toned-down charge of attempted second-degree homicide. The jury, convinced she was mentally ill, sent her to Winnebago Mental Health Institute for 25 years. But hold on, the plot twists. In 2021, the judge says she's not a danger anymore and grants her conditional freedom. Fast forward to September 2023 and the GPS shackles are gone. Yeah, you heard that right. Wire's got the most freedom she's had since this whole nightmare started. Is this the beginning of a new chapter for her? Only time will tell. Wow, what a journey we've just been on together. If you found today's video as intriguing and eye-opening as we hoped, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Your support means the world to us and helps us bring more fascinating content your way. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. It really helps us understand what content you love and want more of. And remember, sharing is caring. Spread the word by sharing this video with your friends, family, and on social media. Let's get everyone in on these incredible stories. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more amazing content. Until next time, keep exploring the mysteries and stories that shape our world. Hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest releases. See you in the next video!